Hi guys and welcome to this my video on and I am reading it analyzing financial situations using amortization tables it's the second video that builds on the one before which one before the one on mathsguru.com head over there free to sign up yada 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 my name's Darren and I am from mathsguru and my job is basically to try and break down maths and make it as simple as you can and smash your VCE or wherever you are all over the world. The only thing I ask, if you would be so kind, is to head to my YouTube channel and subscribe. It just lets me know that someone out there is actually watching and that it's worthwhile doing this. I get to a point where I'm like, nah, no one's watching these. Just give it up and spend time with your three-year-old daughter. And every now and again, I get a subscriber burst and I'm like, hold on a moment, people are actually watching. So that would be great if you would do me the honor. Now, normally I would talk through the learning objectives, but wow, you guys can pause the video and watch this if you want to. So let's get going on to the stuff. Now, as I say, this builds on the video I did a little while ago actually on amortization tables, which basically is a way of showing payments and principal reductions and etc, etc, etc. And so basically in the previous video we looked at the idea of principal reductions, uh, where basically maybe you've taken out a loan and uh, you've opened, got an opening balance, you're making some payments, the bank or your provider is charging you some sort of interest, and then we would have to understand what the principal reduction or in this situation, principal increase would actually show. All right, so basically the idea of reading an amortization table, really, really important. Understanding about the balance, the payments, the interest, what you do, whether you add these two values together to get this one, or whether you subtract them to get this one. And then basically, how do you go from my balance and this value here to get to my new balance? That's the, the basics and, uh, you know, VCAR, uh, and textbook writers, I think, have given a lot more time to amortization tables this year. So I think it's going to be quite important. Now, in many cases, you're going to want to find the final payment for reducing balance loans and annuities, right? So in this situation, we've been given four lines of an amortization table. And it's telling us that after effectively three payments, there is $278.56 left. The question is, will I have enough to make a final payment. If I pay another $250, will it clear my payment? Now, a lot of people go, well, yeah, because $250 is, is you know, less than $278.56. Now, I'll have a bit left over. But will you have a bit left over? Because, don't forget, we also have to add on interest, all right? So this may be a good SAT question or an exam question. Can you find what the value of the final payment is? So let's actually have a look at an example here. Let's delete that five from when I did this on my live stream. Yes, these are also available under the crash course sections of MassGuru.com. Look at the amortization table below. If we make a payment, a fifth payment of $5,009.12, will it clear the loan? Hmm, it's important to note that we always have to pay interest. And again, we have to pay interest. So what I tend to do now is go, okay, the fifth row is going to be that. 500.9.12. So now we've got to work out the interest. But the question is, how do I work out my rate of interest? And again, this is a perfect SAC style question because they'll get you to work out the interest somewhere and multi step. So if you remember how to work out the interest, I'm going to take the interest paid and divide it by the previous balance that it came from. So what would that be? 1600 divided by 20, 1, 2, 3, and I would times that by 100. Now, obviously, I could bring up my CAS calculator, which I'm going to do. Um, I'm using the TI Inspire class pad, guys. Don't worry about it. I'm fairly sure the functionality for the basic stuffs is the same. So I multiply that by 100, and there we go. So I get my interest rate there of 8%. So to go from line to line to line, I'm paying 8% interest. All right, that's fair enough. So the question is... So the question is, how much interest will I pay on $4,638.12? Well, I'm going to pay 8% on it. So I want 8% of 4638.12. And again, firing up my cash calculator, I'm going to do 8 divided by 100. There's my 8% of 4638.12. Hit enter. It gives me a grand total of, now we also have to round these to two decimal places, 371.05. Right, so there we go. So there's my calculations. Principle of reduction suggests to me here that I'm taking stuff away. So let me just check. What I tend to do is I say, well, if I started with $5,009.12 and I had an interest of $1,600, did that get bigger than $5,009 or smaller? Well, obviously it got smaller. 
so I must have subtracted them. So I'm now going to subtract those two values there. I'm going to do that off screen if that's okay with you guys, because um, otherwise I'm going to cover over the important stuff. $5,009.12 minus $371 and five cents. It gives me a grand total of uh, four, oh, he says, uh, 5,000, 4638.07. Hold on a moment. Now, this is where you have to sort of go back and say, well, let's compare. I actually have $4,638.12 that I need to pay, but my principal reduction is only going to be $4,638.07. So if I was to do this value minus that value, I'm actually going to be five cents. I'm going to be short by five cents. And it seems really silly to pay the bank that five cents, yeah? So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to adjust my final payment. I don't want that five cents left in the bank account. So therefore, my final payment is going to be $5,009.12 plus the five cents that I would be over. So $5,009.17. And you're going to be varying that final payment over and over and over and over and over again. Notice I still had to work out all the values from my amortization table, but it was then comparing this principal reduction with my balance to decide, well, is there an overpayment or an underpayment? Now, in this situation, because I was five cents under, I added five cents onto there. If I was five cents over, then I would deduct five cents from there. Right? And again, these are all the things that really practice makes perfect. Now, again, here are the notes. If you notice, I've said notes are downloadable from mathsguru.com. Everything I do behind me, calculator screenshots and all that type of stuff is downloadable. My advice is head over there, sign up, download the notes, and then you can scroll all over there. Because what I'm saying, I can't physically put everything on here, but you might turn and go, oh, that was a really important piece of information. Write it on the notes, put it in your summary book, okay? So basically the question was taken uh, from Cambridge. Thank you very much, Cambridge, for letting me use it. And here they actually told you that it was 8% per annum. My payments were every single year. And all of that becomes massively important as time goes on, all right? So again, we calculated and I worked out there. So that was me sort of replicating it in Excel so that if I had payment number five, and maybe one day I'll update that slide rather than say $5, because that doesn't make any sense. And what we noticed here was, there was my $371.05. There was my principal reduction by doing my payment minus my interest. So that's how much my principal was going to go down by, which left me that five cents. Now, when we get to the CAS stuff later on, you're going to be working out final values left, right, and center, and then working out how to adjust one of your payments. And again, the, the, the Cambridge textbook has sort of changed the language a little bit, made it a little bit more tricky, but hopefully I will help you smash through the trickiness. Now, obviously, in a SAC or a VCAR exam, what are they going to ask you to do? Well, maybe they're going to ask you to find the last row of an amortization table. So here's an example. Consider the following amortization table for a reducing balance loan of $10,000. Now, again, whenever they give me information, I'm trying to work out where on my table that's going to be. My initial payment is going to be here on my balance of $10,000 with an interest rate of 8% per annum. Now, remember, that's going to help me work out missing values here. That interest value is going to be 8% of that value there. What else have we got? Compounding quarterly. Oh, so again, we now need to be careful because my interest rate isn't going to be 8%. My line interest rate or each of those payment interest rates is actually going to be 8 divided by 4. So it's actually only going to be 2%. And if you want to check, and obviously I always, 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 always check, I would be doing 200 divided by 10,000 and then times it by 100 just to check to see. So bring up my calculator there. Let's do 200 divided by 10, one, two, three, times by 100. And there we go. That's my line interest rate, line by line by line, 2%. Good to know. Uh, what are we going to try and do? Find values A, B, and C. Now, again, do I need to do lots of calculations here? Hmm, we're going to see. Well, Actually, the first thing I know is I can find the value of C pretty quickly without any worry whatsoever because I know that my balance before was 2,575.47. I've cleared it, so my principal reduction must be that value. Yeah? So automatically, I can write here that my value of C is 2575.47. Ka-ching. Right. All right. What else do I need to know? Uh, my payment. Do I know what my payment was? No, not really. 
Can I find my interest? Absolutely. Well, I can find my interest here because it's 2% of that value there. So I'm going to say 2% of 2575.47. Again, let's bring up my calculator because it's not really going to cover. So 2% is 2 divided by 100 times that by 2 divided by 100 times 2 divided by 100 times that by 2547 hit enter, gives me $51.51. So I now know my value of B is 51, 51. Ka-ching, don't forget, rounding to two decimal places is really, really important, because if you don't, sadly, you're gonna get things wrong. Right, so I now know that this value here is 50, 51. I know that value there was 2575.47. Can I work out my payment? Well, a lot of people go, well, yeah, it's 2626, isn't it? <laughs> Remember to get this to sorry to get this value here. I took my payment and I subtracted my interest. Well, to do it backwards, I now know that I can do my principal reduction plus that 5051 should give me my value of A. So changing my pen, let's say A then is gonna have to be what did I say? So I'm not gonna do this on screen with my calculator 2575.47, and I'm gonna add 5051, and that's gonna give me. Whew, two six two five point nine eight and there we go and that is really i've seen those in so many different types of sacks and exams it's crazy now we can graph values from amortization tables um i'm only doing this because it's in the cambridge textbook and again cambridge thank you so much for allowing me to use your examples you guys really rock um but in in some cases they're saying right okay well what we want you to now do is plot a graph of the interest and the principal reduction. So it wants the interest and the principal reduction. Now that doesn't mean interest versus principal reduction, it means do the interest on one graph and the principal reduction on another. Now again, I'm not gonna do too much of this because it's gonna blow out the length of this video. And again, I've not really seen this anywhere um, in an exam, but it's ultimately sackable uh, if that's an actual word. So for payment number zero, the interest was zero. For payment number one, our interest was $12.50. So I'd probably be doing something around, well, where were $12.50? At 25, somewhere around there, $12.50. Then my interest would be $9.43. So it's getting smaller. So again, what do you notice? I mean, a, a graph at the very bottom there. My principal reduction, you know, for payment number one, $245, which is going to be, I know, somewhere here. And then $248, a little bit more higher. Again, plotting those, make sure you do it accurately, but I'm sort of gonna sideswipe that for this moment in time. And believe it or not, that is the end of this video. As I say, it's basically building on that previous amortization table video. So if you've watched the first one of this series, it's just basically asking you to find that last row. Very important skill to practice, and practice makes perfect. If you can, subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you very much. It lets me know that you're watching. Let your mates and your teachers know that this resource is here, and hopefully it's pretty good. Um, there are other videos coming up in this particular series, and others, and I hope to see you in one of those. If not, please take care and stay safe.